good morning, everybody. I'm uh, uh, Professor Stephen Chia from the Center for Global Archaeological Research, University of Science Malaysia in Penang. And uh, I've been uh, invited to uh, give a lecture on this uh, for, for the Siapakon Archaeological Field School 2022. And uh, Today, I'll be talking about archaeological practices in Malaysia on the protection and conservation of archaeological heritage. Yeah. So before I start, I would like to thank the uh, Silpakon University in particular for, for inviting me to share my, uh, my knowledge and my, uh, my experiences in, uh, on, on archaeological practices in Malaysia. Yeah. So, also, before I start, I would like to uh, offer my sincere apology for 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 changing the time uh, schedule a few times already uh, because of <laughs> commitment here. Okay, but uh, so without further ado, I would like to start my lecture if I may. So today I'll be talking about uh, the distribution and types of archaeological heritage in Malaysia threats to uh, archaeology by development uh, activities and uh, how we protect our archaeological heritage using laws and uh, also some examples of, uh, of a conservation project and also uh, how we uh, what are the actions we do to protect archaeological heritage in Malaysia okay so these are the major archaeological sites in Malaysia On, in the map you can see uh, we have a lot of sites in uh, Peninsula Malaysia. Uh, it's, it's connected to Southern Thailand. Yeah? So you can go to uh, Hajai, Songkla from here very uh, easily. Yeah? Uh, Naratiwa, Ayala and all that is uh, very near to our border on, uh, of, of Peninsula Malaysia. And our archaeological finds in, the, in, uh, in Peninsula Malaysia is also very similar to Southern Thailand and Central Thailand as well. So uh, the other area that we work a lot on is uh, for archaeological research is in uh, in Borneo, island of Borneo in the state of Sabah and Sarawak. Okay, and we have worked on more than a few hundred sites already yeah? for, for, since uh, 19, 1990s, yeah, nineteen eighties, yeah. So these are the sites in Malaysia and it's uh, like Thailand as well uh, and uh, many countries in Southeast Asia. We have uh, we have open air prehistorical sites, we have cave sites, we have uh, temple historical sites, we have uh, underwater sites also. Yeah. So there are a lot of artifacts are found from this site. Uh, uh, we have uh, very old Paleolithic stone tools like chopper. We have Urban way from the Neolithic period, yeah. uh, very similar to uh, the ones in Bang Bang Bangkau, yeah, uh, in in uh, Central Thailand, and we have also a lot of bronze ages, yeah, uh, from Peninsula and uh, from Sabah and Sarawak also is quite similar to those in uh, Northern Thailand, in uh, in Banchiang and Nonota, yeah, and in other parts of. Uh, uh, Southeast Asia in Vietnam and elsewhere, and also Bontus, Saladon from shipwreck. Yeah, there are a lot, and then uh, all, of course a lot of glass bits from uh, proto historical sites. Yeah, and many other artifacts. Yeah, which I cannot show here. Oh, and uh, the the major threats to archaeology in uh, in Malaysia is uh, is agricultural activities and housing estate. We have a uh, huge oil pump. Uh, plantation now and before that was rubber plantation so when you clear the land you destroy a lot of the open air sites yeah this happened a lot in uh, in in uh, in the Longong Valley and in Sabah as well when they clear the land for for the for planting of uh, rubber and uh, uh, palm oil yeah and uh, this is another example of uh, construction of a highway going to uh, Longong Valley UNESCO World Heritage Site now and uh, before the it was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site, uh, the a highway was built. Yeah, uh, in 1996, and uh, during the construction of the highway, the 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 
the the Buddha's uh, uh, Paleolithic site. Yeah? So we, uh, some of our workers uh, from the village who have worked with us, they saw their stone tool in this site, they recognized the stone tool and uh, they reported to us and then we had to go and uh, stop the project yeah, with, the, with the public work department of Malaysia. So, and then we rescue this site uh, which is dated at least 200,000 years old based on the, the type of stone artifact, mostly choppers yeah, from Paleolithic period. Uh, these are some of the stone tools found from the site. A lot of this type of chopper and, uh, and, uh, and uh, flat tools, yeah, made, made, made mostly from uh, quartzite and, uh, and quartz. Yeah. And also another big uh, major threat in, uh, to archaeology in Malaysia is guano digging and treasure hunting. Okay, Guano digging uh, on your left side, the pokso here, you see a, a big hole there. Yeah? Uh, where uh, my, my professor Zraina is standing yeah? uh, uh, this is these are dug by uh, the farmers uh, villagers in uh, in uh, in the Longgong Valley and this soil that uh, is very fertile soil uh, because it's uh, rich in guano and, and uh, calcium uh, carbonate uh, they use it to for planting uh, uh, paddy in the paddy fields and also from plant, planting vegetables and for the fruit farms as well so and some of them are entrepreneurial some of them will collect this soil and put in a in a guni sack like is the photo you see on the top right and uh, they will sell the bag of soil to to people in the town to for their vegetable farm or for their flower pot uh, flower to grow flowers and uh, other things or whatever they need yeah for using soil that is for tau soil from the from the cave yeah so these are major issues in uh, in uh, in uh, not only in the Longgong valley but in other cave sites in malaysia in peninsula sabah and sarawak as well because uh, of guano digging yeah uh, in the near cave is worse they have been they have made big digging of guano uh, for since the 1960s until now they're still digging for guano they uh, because it's it's a big enterprise there, yeah. So, and uh, and what, how is guano digging uh, and treasure hunting uh, destroying our archaeological site and artifact? You may ask. Right? So, so in our case, we uh, usually find the stone tools, the human human skeleton, and all that. Uh, they are thrown. They are the treasure hunt, uh, hunter and the corner diggers are not interested in the human skeleton and the stone tools and artifacts. They will just throw it away, discard it, and you can find it uh, everywhere on, at the site. Yeah, they're thrown out, thrown away. They are interested in only the the soil for tar soil and for for the corner digger and for the treasure hunter. They're interested in uh, artifacts that are of of value. Yeah, that can that can be sold and uh, that can will will for a lot of money if for example go artifact or artifact that as a complete ceramic for example they can sell in the market for for a lot of money so well like skeleton and stone tools they're not interested or broken pots they will throw it away so it destroy our data yeah our institute data and our institute site yeah so and this is also, there are a lot of threats to archaeology in Malaysia. We have a lot of threats from uh, from the weather, from the, uh, from the well, rain, from the sun, yeah, and for the high humidity, yeah. So, if you look at the picture on the left uh, corner, these are wood coffins, like the, uh, they have been uh, damaged by uh, by erosion. You know, it was properly arranged uh, at the side of the of the rock cliff to protect from the rain, but the uh, the wood has uh, rotted and all the coffins have fallen because of the constant exposure to uh, to the rain and the sun yeah and then uh, also high humidity yeah the wood has start, uh, started to rot already although it's made from hardwood like uh, uh, iron wood yeah belian we call it so it's just like in uh, in thailand as well in uh, in uh, in Tamlot and in uh, Mehon Song area, we have you have a lot of this uh, lock coffin or so, yeah. Uh, so it's 
this is the same uh, wood coffin culture uh, dated to about thousand years here in, uh, in this one is in Sabah yeah? and uh, also we have uh, on the right uh, corner here we have uh, we cannot see the painting this is in the Nia cave the paintings are uh, in the in the in the painted caves yeah we have a lot of hematite paintings that have been uh, uh, that have uh, faded yeah some of them and there's also the danger of if you see the green color uh, uh, stuff uh, on the wall of the cave painting it's actually algae or yeah? well, this algae are growing growing up and the painting is just right below the algae so in uh, if uh, if if it's not properly uh, conserved or protected the painting this algae might grow over the uh, painting and destroy all the painting yeah so this is a real danger i've seen uh, while working at near so i i heard uh, the museum doing something like i hope it will, it will work uh, no? otherwise the painting will go if you don't protect it yeah because it's a uh, high it's a uh, it's high humidity and uh, really low sunlight there so this algae will grow uh, you have to you have to really uh, do something about the environment yeah, so that it will it will stop the growing of this algae or you have to remove the algae or some somehow yeah uh, on the left bottom corner also we have a lot of uh, metal artifacts like this bronze drum also yeah you have a lot of this dong song drum they call it in, in southeast asia and uh, a lot have been found uh, near the sea and it's highly corroded yeah these are all due to the salt yeah from the sea and uh, so it's a uh, problematic so we have to really uh, protect that how to conserve it yeah most of the sites also the megalithic sites are a lot of the the megalith and broken yeah because of uh, weather and uh, and also uh, human uh, change in human uh, beliefs yeah like uh, like in the in Borneo in the highlands of Borneo the natives people, the indigenous people of, uh, for example, the Kalabits, yeah, they do not uh, uh, practice animism, like the old traditional belief. Many of them became uh, Christians, yeah. So when they become Christian or Islam, uh, Muslim, they start. They don't believe in all this uh, traditional uh, worshiping of the uh, the uh, the megalithic stones and all that. So they were destroy all this stone uh. that's another big issue so uh, which uh, i think the the museum have uh, settled already with the local people yeah they don't destroy the the megalith uh, at the site before that they wanted to destroy and and, and throw away all the stones yeah so it's, it's actually destroying our heritage our uh, our culture yeah past culture so also some of the most challenging problem in Malaysia, I think it's the same in Southeast Asia, yeah. Other countries South is the uh, conservation uh, process preservation of, of organic material, in particular human human skeletal remains, yeah. In most sites, like the one on the left, is this is an op, uh the cave site, yeah. At the cave mark, we say exposed to rain and uh and and sun. So a lot of the human remains are very badly damaged and uh, have a decayed. Yeah. So there is not much uh, left to be uh, studied, and a lot of the data we, uh, from the skeletal remains uh, have been uh, uh, decayed. Yeah. So we cannot uh, know a lot of things about the uh, the skeletal remains. For example, we it's very hard to find evidence of the gender of the of uh, we cannot get uh, DNA from the skeletal because it's badly uh, uh, decayed already, yeah. And uh, we don't know the a lot whether this this person suffer from illness or not because a lot of skeleton have uh, have turned into soil, yeah. So these are the major issues, lah, yeah? Also, uh, in Malaysia, uh, there's there's a big problem uh, of. Uh, vandalism and uh, graffiti at sites yeah so on your left you can see a lot of people drawing paintings new paintings new rock art on the on the wall of the of the cave yeah so these are all 
or vandalism lah, graffiti lah. People come there and they will they will write something there and at the site, so it destroy the 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 original uh 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 aspect of the site, yeah. And also on the left, on the right picture, you can see uh it's actually a wood coffin that has been burned, yeah. So people. There are people who go hunting in the in the village in the in the jungle, and uh, when they see this wood coffin, they they uh, they will take this wood coffin and use it as a uh, fuel. Lah. They will use it to burn to make fire. Uh, so in another in other in in other words, they destroy the the wood coffin because uh, I don't know they don't appreciate all this anymore. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so it actually uh. They damage all this. Uh, we've seen a lot of some of the wood coffin has been uh, has been uh, burned. Yeah, used as firewood. Yeah, while they are hunting, uh, uh, or when they take temporary shelter, you know, uh, at night. Yeah, and there are also a lot of the wood coffin inside that has been plundered. Uh, you know, vandalized. Yeah, for 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 the for the very items that are precious. And uh, another big issue in Malaysia, especially in northern, uh, in the northern region of uh, Peninsular Malaysia, and also in Sabah and Sarawak, also is is a uh, pouring of limestone hills, yeah, that have caves and rock shelters with archaeological uh, uh, sites and uh, artifacts, yeah. So on the right corner, you can see uh, one of the limestone here have been quarried for marble and uh, limestone for to to make cement for for building uh, for building material yeah so this been uh, uh, very disruptive uh, and uh, several archaeological sites have been destroyed since the uh, 60s uh, 70s even yeah but now the government is more strict now so any of this project we have to do HIA uh, heritage impact assessment now, yeah before you don't need to do that so now it's a bit better now, yeah, with, with, with awareness and uh, new laws, yeah, which I will discuss later. And on the left side is an example of a cave of a recent uh, uh, in, indigenous rock art uh, that has been uh, destroyed by uh, quarrying, yeah. They blasted the 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 cave site, and then uh, this is this this one piece of the fragment of the charcoal painting uh, of the indigenous uh, orang asli people, yeah. That uh, we have managed to to uh, collect yeah from the damage site before the museum stopped this project yeah in uh, in the nineteen nineties in uh, Longgong Perak at Gua Badak yeah so these are some of the Malaysian heritage laws or uh, uh, protective measures that uh, we do uh, we have the I don't know about other countries in South Asia uh, for Thailand the Philippines or Indonesia but uh, in Malaysia, we have the federal laws and with the state laws, and we also have the customary, the native laws that we have to, uh, that is applicable to protect uh, archaeological heritage in our country. Yeah, the most important law is the National Heritage Act, two thousand five. Yeah, which was uh, revised and uh, introduced in two thousand five. Yeah. So this is the main heritage that will protect a lot of the archaeological sites in uh, in Malaysia, lah. Yeah. And uh, apart from that, there are other acts, lah. That is uh, uh, the town country national land court act and all that, yeah. And for states, they have their own law. So federal have a, the big national heritage act two thousand five. The state have their own law. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Malaysia we have thirteen states. So each states have their own law. So they have, they are each uh they, for example. In Sabah, they have the Antiquity Treasure Trove uh, Act, yeah, 2006. Now it's a new law now. They've changed it. They've, uh, in 2017, they introduced the Sabah Heritage uh, Ordinance, if I'm not wrong, yeah. Oh. And then Sarawak also, they've introduced a new Sarawak uh, Cultural Heritage Ordinance, yeah, uh, recently also. Uh, Malacca, they have one. Penang also, they have one, yeah. So Perak, they have the museum what enactment. So there are many state roles that will protect also, yeah. And uh, apart from that, 
uh, the natives also have their own laws to protect the heritage site yeah uh, which is uh, which is clear connected to them so like the uh, Wixington in uh, in in Sarawak they have the Adat Kain Kenya yeah which established in 94 and the Adat Penan which was established uh, after that yeah? and in peninsula in Malaysia they are still using the Aboriginal people acts in established since the British time 1954 so these are all the acts that will help protect and uh, that will govern the uh, preservation and protection of the cultural and heritage site in, 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 in Malaysia. Okay, some of the protective measures that this, uh, Malaysia does is uh, especially by the Department uh, of uh, Museum and uh, Department of National Heritage. Uh, uh, since the late 1880s, lah, yeah, to the early 1990s, uh, all these protective um, measures are all handled by the Department of Museum Malaysia. Yeah? And what they do is they gazette a lot of the site and uh, archaeological and historical site yeah? in the early days. It's by the Department of Museum Malaysia. Yeah? So like in Thailand, it's the Fine Art Department, uh, for example. Yeah? But uh, in since 2005, uh, uh, the Department of National Research was formed to, to and uh, they have taken over from the Department of Museum uh, in in uh, the role of uh, protecting and uh, heritage site and archaeological site in, in in Malaysia. Yeah. So the, now the Department of uh, the Heritage Act is under the Department of National Heritage. So the heritage have a heritage committee. Uh, they have committees to to look at all our archaeological and uh, cultural heritage and artifacts yeah and uh, and uh, usually uh, I'm on, I'm on one of this uh, heritage committee also and what we do is we will look at all the archaeological sites and uh, artifacts that found in the country and uh, we will we will see its value in terms of uh, uh, archaeological value and uh, uh, national value and uh, if it's very important, it will be listed under the national heritage uh, site, yeah. Or the it's just a heritage site if it's not so important. So this when we listed listed as on this list, they will be protected by government. So so any development around this heritage national heritage and heritage site will we need uh, approval from uh, from the department of heritage uh, before. So it's somehow. It's one way to protect this site from uh, being uh, being damaged yeah, by irresponsible uh, developers. Yeah. So to that we have more. I think more than more than eleven sites now. Yeah. Most of them in the Longong Valley, uh, also in uh, in uh, in the Bujang Valley, and uh, so rock art site of Tambun and uh, other sites. Uh, yeah. In uh, in southern uh, peninsula. Yeah. Have been listed as national heritage site. Yeah. So. The Malaysian government also uh, try to protect the site more, yeah, especially the a lot of sites in uh, the Longgong Valley. So in uh, in two thousand twelve, we have managed to uh, to to put the archaeological heritage of the Longgong Valley as a UNESCO World Heritage uh, list. Yeah, it was uh, and it was uh, inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage list. And now it's very well protected now. Yeah. So any development, any any uh, in the Longgong Valley, we have to, we have to go through very strict uh, rules and regulation. And also the uh, the, the authorities, uh, local and national uh, authorities, have uh, will will help to manage the the heritage also. Yeah. So this is a this is a added uh, added protection yeah of the longong valley heritage uh, archaeological heritage in 2012 so so far it's, uh, it has been uh, uh, successfully managed and uh, we have seen an increase in tourist uh, arrivals at uh, the longong valley uh, since the inscription yeah as the unesco world heritage site so apart from that, we have also a lot of uh, later historical cities like Melaka and Georgetown also on the World Heritage List in 2008, yeah, and other. So the, some of the examples uh, of uh, projects that 
on uh, archaeological and cultural protection in uh, and conservation in Malaysia. Uh, uh, this one, uh, this one, uh, the one I discussed earlier, uh, the Longong Valley. So the Longong Valley is very important for our heritage and for world, world heritage, uh, world archaeological uh, heritage because the Longong Valley have evidence of uh, of uh, 74,000 uh, years old site, politic site, which uh, is form part of a jigsaw puzzle for the uh, migration of early humans from uh, the route from, uh, from from Africa to southern uh, Asia through through Thailand through Peninsula Malaysia to 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 Australia about fifty to sixty thousand years ago yeah to Australia so it's a very important piece of evidence for 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 this migratory route. So that's why it's, it has been listed, listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2012. Yeah? And uh, in Sabah, Sarawak, we have also very uh, important sites like the Nia Caves, yeah? which was uh, gazetted uh, and protected as a National Historical Monument in 1958. Yeah? That was during the British period before independence. And uh, now it's protected in the near as a near, uh, the near national park, yeah, under the care of the Sarawak Museum Department, yeah, and the Sarawak Forestry Department, yeah. So here in the near cave, uh, the important discovery uh, is the oldest human skeleton, uh, dated to forty thousand years old in uh, in Malaysia, the oldest one, yeah. So there are hundreds of other human barriers dated to the Neolithic and. Uh, 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 the metal age period yeah as well uh, we have also cave painting board barriers uh, the artifacts from paleolithic neolithic uh, metal age and or even uh, even uh, uh, recent historical period also in the near uh, sites yeah so so they also the author the South state has also built a near archaeology museum now yeah to exhibit some of the artifacts and uh, for visitors going to the to visit the site, you know, so a lot of information on the the history of the research of what was found and all that. Yeah, so it is one of the most important sites in, in in Sarawak. Yeah, apart from other sites. So in Sabah, one of the very important sites is uh, Bukit Tengkorak archaeological site. This this is one of the important Neolithic site in Southeast Asia. And uh, this site has been gazetted in 1994 yeah, and declared as a cultural heritage site in 2013 by the Sabah Museum Department yeah, under their, uh, under their uh, Sabah heritage uh, law. Lah, yeah. This is one of the a very big pottery site in Southeast Asia and uh, it also hold also very important evidence of, uh, of um, very long, uh, I think one of the longest maritime thread route, yeah, uh, during the Neolithic period about three thousand years ago, from from Sabah to 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 uh, Melanesia in uh, in uh, in uh, near Papua, yeah, northern northern Australia. There are also millions of portraits found at this site, very rich site, a lot of microliths, a lot. Of, it's a it's near the sea. It's a it's a marine time uh, based uh, economy with a lot of marine food and shell remains found at the site. And then there are a lot of artifacts. Yeah? We have been, uh, all these artifacts have been showcased at the it's a museum that has been built. Uh, we call it the Bukit Tengkora Archaeology Gallery yeah? for uh, visitors and tourists. Uh, this site is well protected now yeah? because uh, you can't have any development around the site now because it's declared a cultural site, just like the Nia Caves. Yeah? So some of the site that cannot be protected, uh, we have to rescue it. Now this is an example of a rescue excavation at uh, at a megalithic, uh, several megalithic site, megalithic sites, uh, in uh, in uh, in Peninsula Malaysia in the Melaka Negeri Sembilan uh, State. Yeah, this is during the construction of a gas pipeline. Yeah, in the 1990s uh, to early 2000, uh, and we were involved with this project. This uh, they're building a huge, uh, long pipeline from uh, the west uh, east coast to the entire uh, along the entire east uh, coastal 
uh, region of Peninsula Malaysia, the gas pipeline goes through all the factories and all this uh, industrial area, yeah, to supply energy gas to all these industries, and it goes right down to Singapore and right up to uh, Thailand, yeah, southern Thailand. So, a lot of the cultural sites uh, uh, affected, yeah, including uh, one of the important uh, archaeological site in uh, in Malacca, yeah, Malacca is a megalithic site, so. This site has been uh, so. What we do is we have to rescue this site before they destroy it, lah. So we excavate this megalithic site, yeah. And these are the megalithic that the site megalith that we has rescued, lah, and saved from the uh, from destruction, yeah. So it was first moved to Kuala Lumpur at the megalithic megalith park, yeah, and then later moved to uh, Putrajaya, no, yeah. Our the main government. Uh, uh, administrative uh, region in KL, yeah. So it's a there's a special megalithic park to to expedite this, yeah, at the, at the, at, in KL. So another work that we are involved with is a uh, heritage assessment of the uh, hydroelectric dam project, yeah. So a lot there there are a lot of hydroelectric dam project. In uh, Sabah, Sarawak, and um, more recently in uh, in uh, in West Malaysia as well. So, for example, the Bakun uh, hydroelectric project in ninety four, and the Murum hydroelectric project in Sarawak, which, which has affected a lot of the longhouses of the native people and the forest, and uh, is is flooded and uh, inundated a lot of the ancient burial sites, cultural habitation sites also. Yeah, so we have to. Uh, Try to rescue as much as we can. We are involved with all these uh, heritage impact assessment. So some of the longhouses have been rescued. You know, whatever uh, iron wood they can save, you know, whatever they can uh, relocate to to an, the, to another settlement area uh, given by the government you know, on higher ground or elsewhere. So also the barrier ground, some of the graves are. Uh, have been exhumed, yeah, by the museum, and identified, and uh, they are paid also compensation for those who are not uh, not exhumed, that uh, preferred the, the graves to be uh, not disturbed and uh, and uh, and uh, flooded, yeah, by the by the dam. So those who want it to be relocated to the new settlement area, the, the museum, and uh, we all help them to identify which one. Yeah, and uh, the museum has helped to relocate and uh, to the new settlement area. Yeah. So this uh, project has actually destroyed a lot of the uh, their longhouses and uh, cultural heritage sites. Yeah. And this is an example of this uh, the long the natives uh, who are affected. Yeah, in the left left bottom corner, these are the the Kayan uh, Kenya group. Yeah, Kayan Kenya group, the Orang Ulu group in uh, in Upper Bakun area. And uh, we have also excavated uh, in all long houses before it was drowned. Now it's drowned already under the water, the Bakun Dam. And we found thousands of uh, glass beads yeah, belonging to the natives. Yeah. Yeah. What is with the Sarawak Museum now? And also uh, we have, uh, in recent years, there is this... Uh, Recently, the there's this Nangri Dam in uh, in in Kelantan now, yeah, uh, which is going is which is going to affect uh, the site of Guacha now, yeah. Guacha is going to be uh, flooded and underwater now because they are planning to build a dam in in, in in Kelantan, yeah. So this is sad news lah for Malaysia, yeah. We're trying to stop it, but I think uh, sometime uh, the state government, the federal people. Uh, Put priority of economic importance more than uh, archaeology, yeah. So, so I don't know what happened to the site, nah, yeah. The Guacha site, and this is uh, another site that uh, we have, we have work on, and another example of uh, how we protect and rescue our our heritage. This is in the Malacca UNESCO World Heritage Site, yeah. This is a very important historical site for, for Southeast Asia because uh, there are a lot of, of it's a very important uh, uh, straight port yeah in in the historical period yeah in the 
1400, 1500s, yeah. With the Portuguese, the Dutch, and the British who uh, been using it, yeah, for spice trade and all that. Yeah? So, so here we found an uh, ancient burial uh, ground of um, that we have to rescue. Yeah, this. Uh, so if you see on the left corner, if you, it's right. Underneath the road here, they found ancient burial ground while they were trying to trying to locate the the this uh, old fort here, yeah, the city fort that surrounds this uh, Malacca, yeah, the old Malacca uh, city, yeah. So while digging the fort wall, they found this uh, very ancient, uh, very old burial, uh, dated to the fourteen hundred thing. Uh, is before the Malacca period, I think. So there were a lot of humans uh, remains here. So we have to remove and protect it. Nah, yeah. Uh, then this is now in, in our, it's now at exhibit at the special museum in Malacca nah, for tourists. Well, this is what we have to do, remove it, conserve it and protect it. Nah, yeah. So the skeletons are all preserved properly uh, under uh, special condition, yeah, under very low temperature and dry condition, so that the bone will not uh, rot, yeah, will not decay further. So it's not on exhibit in Malacca no, for for local and foreign tourists. Okay, what some of the actions by the Malaysian authority, as I mentioned before, we have to imp we are to protect our heritage site and uh, and artifacts, yeah. So we have to implement a lot of heritage law lah. We better monitoring, uh, stricter and greater empowerment involving locals lah. This this is a, this is establish the establishing the heritage law is is easier than monitoring yeah in my opinion, because once the law established you can just use it yeah, but to monitor is a bit a uh, big problem in Malaysia yeah because. Because of many reasons, one of the reason is we do not have enough people, uh, staff, yeah, to go and monitor all the sites. We have hundreds of sites, yeah. So some of the sites are, are located near the cities, the towns. It's easier to to access and uh, they can monitor it every day. But some of the archaeological sites are located deep in the jungle. You have to take a boat. You have to travel a few days, yeah, to reach the site. So. So it's very difficult for the authorities to monitor this site. So it's become problematic, yeah, because you don't have uh, enough staff to monitor. So some of these sites, especially those very far away, uh, that is without little security, are often been looted, nah, been uh, damaged, looted, vandalized, you know. Um, and uh, if there is development, people, the authorities don't know what is going on. So, so right now, uh, what? The Malaysian government is doing, I think, is the same in uh, other countries in Southeast Asia, is to empower the locals lah, to help in uh, in uh, safeguarding and protecting our own uh, our heritage. Yeah, so in Malaysia, the locals are are usually uh, engaged by the the local museum or the heritage uh, department to to help protect the sites, especially those that are very far away. So they are usually engaged as a part-time workers for the museum or heritage department or, or daily paid workers to 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 monitor yeah, to keep an eye on the site if there is any vandalism or any any development near the site they will have to report yeah, because they're the, they're living in the area yeah they can see who what is happening to the site they, they can report to the museum or the heritage department and they will come and uh, and uh, and uh, try to protect it lah, and, and resolve any problem that is uh, is happening to the site. Yeah. So other other action by the Malaysian Authority is uh, public awareness and education. Lah, yeah, especially on uh, to the uh, school children, to tourists visiting the site that you should not damage, collect artifacts at the site, for example. And uh, with all this public education and awareness to the younger generation, hopefully. The uh, there will be less vandalism and uh, and graffiti at uh, our archaeological sites uh, and cultural heritage sites as well. Yeah, when they are more aware of their role and their responsibility, not only 
in protecting our own uh, cultural heritage. You know, so the role, the responsibility does not only lies on the uh, the museum and the heritage department people only the government yeah but the the public be, yeah also have to play their role in uh, in in safeguarding protecting our own heritage yeah for the future gener generations and so 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 the other other measures carried out by the Malaysian authorities is they they have to prioritize funds for protection of a heritage site nah, yeah because there are so many sites in Malaysia, hundreds of sites, the same in other countries in South Asia. You have to see, you have to list and check which one is more important. We cannot, uh, there's not enough money to protect all the sites. So usually they have to protect the priority will be given to national national heritage site. Nah. Those are on the national list. Yeah. So this site have problem, what the funds will be allocated more to, to protect this. Sites that, that are not so important will, get, will, will not be on the on the top of the list, lah. it will be lower on the list. Yeah. So, so it, we also have a lot of storage facilities problem in uh, in Malaysia, because if you do a lot of excavation, you will get a lot of artifacts, and it's, we cannot. You, there's no no space to keep the artifact. Yeah. So most of the museum don't have space to keep, so it's usually it's kept at uh on borrowed uh terms at uh, universities and in, uh, in uh, local universities or in. Uh, in other other areas lah, no? other storage areas. So the, that's that's a problem also sometimes. Yeah, you know? when you excavate and uh, there's too many too many artifacts, you, you, there's no place to keep them. Yeah, to properly. Yeah, artifacts have to kept to be kept properly, especially organic artifacts. If you don't keep it properly, it will damage. It will it will deteriorate over over time. Yeah, so you need to preserve and conserve it properly, especially. Uh, artifacts like human remains yeah and also human resources and training is, uh, we are still i don't think it is enough yeah so preferably ideally i prefer every museum to have a conservator and archaeologist yeah uh, in every state 13 state but uh, right now I don't, we don't have that number yet uh, most of the archaeologists and conservator are based in uh, in universities and in uh, in uh, in mu in the national museum and uh, the main state museum, not every museum has that. Yeah, so there's not enough uh, of these people. I hope uh, government will will train more people lah, and, uh, and and give scholarship and training to most of the staff to become uh, archaeologists and conservator. Yeah, to help protect our site, to help conserve our site. So lastly, uh, this is taking place now lah. Cooperation and uh, collaboration among all stakeholders is slowly taking place, especially at UNESCO World Heritage Site. The federal state and government have to work together because federal government have their own laws and interests. So sometimes it's there's conflicting interests. So it's problematic also. So they have to work together. Uh, the building land owners also, sometimes uh, they have to work with the authorities because some of the archaeological sites uh, or cultural heritage building are located in private private land yeah private owners if the private land owner don't want to cooperate with the state to protect preserve it then uh, it becomes problematic you cannot do anything so so this these are very important but uh with a lot of uh education and a lot of uh dialogues and uh, and uh, forum with the the government and the universities have with all these stakeholders they're slowly becoming uh, more more cooperative and more 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 aware of their roles lah, and to protect yeah and responsibility yeah including the local communities people and tour operators also yeah okay uh last but not least uh is the uh the, there's a i've written an article on on all this yeah actually uh you can read it further i've given a copy to to Parkon university uh you can get it from him, yeah, uh, Doctor Narupo, uh, uh, on an article that I have written in two thousand seven on the protection and conservation of archaeological heritage in Malaysia. Yeah, so I think that's all uh, from me today. Thank you very much. Uh, terima kasih. Yeah, sawadikap. Yeah.